What's the state of cross-platform applications in 2023 and how did we get here? Let's have a quick history lesson. Before we dive into the history, also make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos about cross-platform development, whether it's Flutter, React Native, Capacitor or anything else that targets the web native platforms. It all started with an apple. In this case, it's not a metaphorical apple, it is actually Apple the company, which in 2010 changed the App Store review guidelines, which paved the way for tools like Unity, Flash or also something called PhoneGap that we might come back to to at a later point. After this change, many tools and companies started building apps in a different way that were not just using native technology. So in 2011, Adobe decided that Flash is probably not the best way to go forward and they instead want to focus on HTML5 applications and at the same time Xamarin also appeared on the screen. In 2012, Zuck dropped the famous quote, our biggest mistake was betting too much on HTML5, which was basically the reason for every company since that point in history history to say cross-platform applications are bad. The Zuck has spoken. However, in reaction to this, Facebook also started working on an internal tool called React Native that might become popular at a certain later point in time. 2013 doesn't have a lot of events, but Google launched Android Studio, which has become the go-to tool to build Android applications, and this certainly also changed how cross-platform applications were developed for Android. At that point, different tools became popular as well, like Sencha Touch and Adobe had in the year before acquired PhoneGate which was now their own service and we're gonna see a little rebranding of that later but nothing too crazy was happening at that point of time. In 2014 Apple announced Swift which didn't really change the cross-platform development space but Facebook also started talking about React Native as an alternative because building native application with iOS and the tooling it was just slow so they started putting more work into React Native. And then 2015 happened that was probably the key year for cross-platform development because in 2015 Ionic version 1 was was released, native script was released, and just like one week before the official native script release, Facebook released React Native. So we got all the big things happening right here in 2015. And Simon also predicted that React Native might become the next big thing. However, next year, 2016, Flutter finally enters the stage, so Google is also competing in the cross-platform space, and since that time we basically got access to all of the big names. We have PhoneGap, we have Flutter, and we have React Native. Additionally, in 2016, the concept of progressive web app becomes more popular, although still until today it has not really widespread adoption. Yes, it is used in a lot of companies for great tools, but I still don't know any of my friends with iOS devices actually using PWAs. 2017 didn't really have a lot of events besides Swift and Kotlin and Xamarin forums being released and Ionic 2 came out, but a tool back then called Exponent rebranded itself to Expo and we're gonna see it that Expo might become more important in some later years. 2018 was an interesting year because Google launched Flutter version 1.0, Adobe announced that it's discontinuing support for PhoneGap and instead focuses on Apache Cordova, which so Cordova is now part of the Apache Foundation, and on top of that a little tool called Electron became more popular to build desktop applications. 2019 was an interesting year especially for the Ionic company. So the Ionic company announced Ionic 4, also known as Ionic for everyone, until 1, 2, 3 versions of Ionic, you could only use it with Angular. Since Ionic 4, we can use it with React and Vue because all components are now web components. And on top of that, they also finally released Capacitor version 1.0, which has basically become the successor to Cordova at this point. In 2020, we finally say goodbye PhoneGap. So we had a good time with PhoneGap, maybe or maybe not, and at this point, it is only Apache Cordova. On top of that, Flutter had some new releases, React had some new releases, but nothing dramatically changed. 2021 was full of new releases, so Microsoft announced .NET MAUI, we have Flutter 2.0 and React Native also introduced the Hermes rendering, which helped to dramatically improve the performance of React Native applications on Android. 2022 saw a new release of Flutter, so we got Flutter version 3 and we also have Tori version 1. So Tori was on the top of a lot of satisfaction ratings lately, I haven't done a lot of content about it yet, but promise there will be more about Tori in the near future because it's around Rust and it's super interesting. 
interesting. And finally, we come to 2023. Ionic announces Ionic version 7. We have React Native currently at version 0.71 something. We have Cordova Common version 5. And we probably also have a new Flutter version, although I think we're gonna stick to Flutter 3 for the rest of this year. So welcome back to reality in 2023. Now let's answer some questions about cross-platform development. First, why did I tell you about all of this? Simply to show that cross-platform development has come a long way. We got basically 13 years of experience of different tools emerging and coming up and all of this almost started with the introduction of the App Store. So we have a really long history of cross-platform development. Why does cross-platform development actually exist because native is always better? Well, with cross-platform you can save a ton of time and a ton of money because you usually just build one code base and you can deploy it from multiple different platforms, sometimes only native, sometimes everywhere the web is. What are the disadvantages? Well, that's easy. You are never completely native. There's always a layer in between. But even if you develop games you will always have a layer in between. Most people use Unity to build games, so they don't really care about this layer in between. But of course, if you use something like Capacitor, your application basically runs in a web view. If you use Flutter, you have the Sky rendering engine, which makes things also kind of strange by having its own system to render your pixels. And ultimately, there just have to be some differences between native and cross-platform development, otherwise everyone would do cross-platform development. What are the most popular frameworks today? Definitely Flutter, React Native and Capacitor. But if you look at the market, there are tons of different tools. So we got Tori coming up. We had native script in the past. There are a lot of different frameworks for the UI, like Framework 7, Sencha Touch. Cordova is still very dominant. No, actually not. Actually, Cordova is not dominant anymore. Which also brings us to the question, what is the best framework? I've tried to explain this in one of my previous videos where I compared Flutter, React Native and Capacitor. And I still stick to this. If you want to have something that is as close as native as possible, I think that would be using Flutter. If you want to have the most code share between your application, then we would be on the end, other end here and that would be Capacitor because you can actually just wrap your web application with Capacitor and deploy it as a native app. And somewhere in between we have React Native which has some sort of code share between your React web project in terms of the logic and it is also pretty native. So there is no best, there are different frameworks, different tools, and they all serve a very specific purpose. Which framework should you learn? This completely depends on what you actually want to do. Are you already part of a company that is using some specific tool? Then maybe learn that. If you're just starting out, look at the jobs you might want to have. So this can be very different from country to country. So if you want to take on a job in your country, check what the market is in your country. If you want to take a remote job, check what the country where your company will be is using for development. Maybe it's Swift UI, maybe it's Kotlin, maybe it's cross-platform. We can't really say. So you got to check out what you want to do. Which one should I use for my project? Well, this is completely subjective and you can just pick whatever you prefer. There's usually a triangle of time, money and quality and usually you can only pick two of those. This brings us now to the future. So let me look into my crystal ball and make a few predictions. First of all, I don't think that any of the big frameworks will suddenly die out and disappear. We have Capacitor, React Native and Flutter, all of them for more than five years now and I don't think they will just immediately leave over the next one, two, three years. Then there's also the question if cross-platform development will actually continue to exist. Just like the human race has evolved, those cross-platform tools also always have evolved and adapted to the current situation. Browsers have improved, devices have improved and they will continue to adapt over the next years. Unless there's something going on in the AI market with plugins and we don't really need any kind of applications anymore, I still think we're gonna have cross-platform app development in the next two, three, five years. Also, all major frameworks have something going on right now. So there's Flutter 3, Capacitor is working, I think, on Capacitor 5. React Native has improvement and Expo is making advancements into Expo routing and using Expo not only for native but also for the web. So there are tons of interesting ideas being worked on right now. So I think we have a great future for the cross-platform development. All right, that was the state of cross-platform in 2023. I hope you enjoyed this overview. If you did so, leave a like, hit the subscribe button and check out galaxies.dev where you can not only learn about React Native and Flutter and Capacitor but also about web development and everything that's important. So go check it out, galaxies.dev. Stay subscribed and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.